Hey everyone, welcome to Tales from the Pros, and this is Michael Giorgio, your host and co-founder of Imagine Ovation. I have a very special guest with me here today. He is a best-selling author and top-rated podcast host with over 250,000 downloads, having interviewed over 150 influential leaders such as Neil Patel, Russell Brunson, Tom Bilyeu, JP Sears, and also including billionaires, best-selling authors, and world-class athletes. He's featured in major publications such as Forbes, Inc., and has been guest in over, at over 60 podcasts. This is Tales from the Pros, where business leaders and influencers share their stories of inspiration, struggles, and successes. And I'm your host, Michael Giorgio. Please welcome Daniel Geffen. Daniel, I really appreciate being with me here today, man. Thank you so much. Woohoo! Hey, Michael, how you doing? I'm good, man. Good, good. Enjoying. I always. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I always do that. Like the hosts always like, whoa, that was crazy. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, you got to start the, you got to wake up the audience. You know, some, sometimes they they're listening to this on their morning commute and they're still half asleep, so I got to wake them up a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? You being you being another you being a, a you know a top podcaster yourself. You've interviewed some awesome people, and I'm sure some you've had some awkward interviews. At least I've had, and at least in the beginning, I'll try to introduce somebody, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like they'll say, "Yeah, I'm 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 glad I'm here." It's like very quiet. I'm just like, "All right, I have to kind of wake up the, the audience." <laughs> yeah, you the know? worst is when you get the awkward silence. I'm like, Michael, welcome to the show, and thanks for letting me pick your brain. Hi. <laughs> this is, are, are you free, are you kidding me like i just gave you like a sick intro and i just like thought the music was playing and i got all excited and the, the audience is like the people listening are like yeah 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 and then it's just like this 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 like silence followed by hi <laughs> where the energy where the energy go man uh, yeah yeah no i know i i've been there i've been through that man i have i've i've been through it um yeah it's it's and you know what it, it's a learning experience you kind of have to deal because everyone has different personalities not everyone's outgoing and open like us right because we're mm -hmm. podcasters as well so we have we kind of have to be passionate and open but some people who are being interviewed they don't they don't know sometimes how to respond they're so intelligent and so experience and all this kind of stuff but they don't when they're being interviewed they don't know how to respond essentially it's kind of crazy you know what it is it's very interesting because i think you you need to be a performer i think that you've got to just learn how to perform um and this is really interesting because i i'm actually i would say i'm an introvert mm -hmm. and i never thought i was I, I always thought i was an extrovert because you know i'm loud and i'm outgoing but really i love being alone and i like just being on my own, just being with myself. And, but why do I, why, you know, why do I become extroversial? Why do I come out of myself? Why do I perform? And, and the reason why is because ultimately what I found in, in, out in life is that if you want to get somewhere, you've got to put yourself out there. If you want to be heard, you've got to, you got to perform. You got to. You got to get out and and you know raise your voice a little bit. Otherwise, mm -hmm. nobody's going to hear you. Nobody's going to know, um, you know who you are and and the message that you want to that you want to give over. Yeah. No, that's that's so true, man. And and, and you know, Daniel, this this kind of leads me into into starting this this episode with you is is what really essentially got you into podcasting. Give us a little background on your on your story and your and your journey. Sure. Uh, so about four years ago, um, I was uh, I moved to Israel, and I kind of semi-retired. I had a successful business that I scaled up and basically outsourced a lot of the the the, the business. So I I was pretty much not that involved in the business anymore. And I get a phone call out of the blue. It's someone who found out about me, and and he was inviting me onto his podcast. And this was the first time I ever heard about a podcast. And I remember he said to me, Daniel, would you like to be a guest on my podcast? And I said, what's that? And he said, well, it's like radio, only it's, you know, it's online. People can listen to it um, on the go and, and they can pause and rewind and forward. It's basically like YouTube is to TV. That's what um, podcasting is, is, is to radio. And I thought, wow, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I've never done anything like that before. And so... I agreed and we, I went on, on his show and I literally like fell in love with the mic. 
Like it, it was just like, I, I found that it was just so natural for me to just talk. And I shared my stories and my successes and my failures. And, and at the end of it, it felt like we were talking for like 10 minutes and the host just wraps it up and says, well, that's the end of the hour. And I said, you're kidding me. We were talking for an hour. He said, yeah. I'm like, wow, that time flies. You know, I'm like, you know, how many people were listening to it? Right. Cause I'm just talking to a mic and, and he's not even there with me. He's on the other side of the world, right? I'm in Israel. He's in the U S so I don't even know who we're talking to. And he says, um, about a thousand people. And like, I almost fell off my chair because <laughs> I've never spoken to a thousand people before ever. Right. The most people I probably spoke to was like, I don't know, 20 at a birthday party. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. it was crazy. So I'm like a thousand people. Are you kidding me? Like, where are they? And he starts listing me countries. He's like, well, uh, I've got you know this much in America and then Canada and, and then England and then and I've got Russia and China and Japan. And I'm just like, what? Wow. You're telling me that I was speaking to over a thousand people all over the world and I'm sitting here in my pajamas in Israel, you know, like in my house. Like, it, this, is, this is crazy. Was it live? And kind of, no, it wasn't live, but he was telling me what his average numbers were per episode. Mm, okay. So at that point, that's when the bombshell drop. And I realized, oh my goodness, this is huge. This is huge. Because what I realized is that if you want to get in front of, you know, a hundred people or 200 people, you know, you've got to travel, you know, book yourself in a hotel, you've got to get on stage, you got to take out, you know, at least two or three days out of your week. Right. Here, you're literally, like I said, I was literally in my pajamas. I didn't go out of my house. Yeah. And I'm speaking to a thousand people. That was the beginning of, of sort of my podcast career. And that's when I, I said, okay, I've got to do this. And so that's when I started my own show and I started getting on other people's shows and, and it just kind of blew up from there. So how did podcasting really lead you to new opportunities such as I, I'm sure you've started other businesses, other companies, speaking, mm -hmm. being an author and so on. How, how did podcasting give you that platform to do all these other things? Well, podcasting literally smashed down all the doors. Like, uh, you know, if I was to describe myself, you know, four years ago, I would say, you know, I was doing well, but I was in my little bubble. Like nobody ever heard of me. Right. Um, you know, I had a successful business. I was married with three children at the time. We now have five uh, since, yeah, totally oh, wow. not, not, mm. not five, not five more. Um, but yeah, total five. <laughs> Lovely. Um, yeah. Great. And, um, but I was in this, I was in my little, my little bubble. Like no one really heard, heard of me before. And I've always wanted to express myself, you know, it, ever since I was a little boy in, in school, I would get in trouble because I would always be, you know, the loudest one in the classroom. And I'd always mm -hmm. try to like, you know, get people's attention. So I'd be the class clown. And I, I actually got bullied for, for expressing myself, you know, not just by the students, but also the teachers would bu bully me literally. Um, and I was emotionally abused growing up because I had this insatiable desire to express myself and and you know people just kept shutting me down mm -hmm. and I was so when I, as well. I was bullied in school as well yep it's terrible it mm -hmm. really is it's it's horrific and the thing is is that you don't have see here's the thing people think oh if you're physically bullied so that's you know that's really bad because you know physically but the truth is i'll be honest with you if i was physically bullied at least you know people would sympathize and they would say, oh my God, what happened? And something would be done about it, right? You get a, a black and blue eye, it's that someone's going to get in trouble, right? The principal's going to be called, you know, my parents are going to, you know, say, hey, what's going on? They're going to sort it out. Yeah. But because it was emotional abuse, you couldn't see it on the outside and I never showed it. And so, so I true. kept it. So you know what I'm saying? I kept it inside and I hid it. And the truth is, I just kept smiling and pretending to be jolly old Daniel because I didn't want people to know that I was suffering. So I was suffering alone inside. Um, so, you know, fast forward to, to now the podcasting, here I am and I'm able to not only express myself, but people want to hear from me and people are giving me feedback like, wow, Daniel, you know, you, you've, you've transformed my life. Like you've been sharing your stories and it's really helped me. I had a person, I had a guy, um, and this brought me to tears. I had a guy send me an email who said to me, Daniel, I want you to know 
that I listened to your to your podcast, um, and you know, I was I was actually considering killing myself. I kid you not. This is an email that I got from this guy. Oh. I was thinking of taking my life. Um, I was in such a bad place, and you gave me such inspiration to just go out and 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 you know help others and start my own podcast show and express myself and be. And now he's a he's he's got a book. He's he's a published author. He has his own podcast show. He's an athlete. I mean, he's turned his whole life around because he heard my show. It's like insane the impact that you can have on another human being on the other side of the planet by starting your own podcast or by going on other people's podcasts. It's it's incredible. So it is. it's a game changer. Yeah. Complete game changer. And and that's not to mention obviously all the people that I've interviewed and I've managed to to my my network is just you know, I've got billionaires that I've interviewed who I literally can speak to whenever I you know, well, not whenever I want, but I pretty much have them on 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 uh, on my phone and I can call them and ask them advice. I have, you know, experts in different fields who I've, you know, got on a call with and they've they've helped me out. I've you know, found one of my business partners um, came from uh, a guest on my show. Um, I mean, there's so many, so many things. My my book, when I wrote my book, um, had I have I, had I written my book, you know, seven or eight years ago before I started the show, like five, you know, even five years ago, I wouldn't have become a bestseller because I didn't have an audience. You know, maybe my mother would have bought my book and and a couple of my cousins and some friends and you know, I whatever, but. The reason why I was able to just go to number one on Amazon was because I had an audience that I already built up over the years. And so when I when I launched the book, it just went bam. You know, I just promoted the book on on the show. So yeah. oh, it's amazing. You yeah. know. I mean, it, you know, I I love when you tell that story, Daniel, about that man who was um, close to committing suicide and you pretty much changed his life. He turned his life around uh, because of your story. Um, I, I had one, there was one thing I went through as well, uh, last year that, uh, I, I basically interviewed this guy. His name was Sean Stevenson. Do you know him? He was disabled. Yes, he's, yes. he's pretty, he's pretty big. Yeah. So he was, oh, it was unbelievable. It was such a, such a great interview. Um, and I promoted the podcast afterwards and I had some people that I, so I did, I do a lot of salsa dancing. I'm a salsa dancer. I, mm. I, I love, love Latin dancing and all that. So uh, I have I know a lot of people in this community around here uh, in 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 Raleigh Durham in North Carolina. It's a huge huge uh, Latin salsa community here, and I had there was a lady that called me, and she said to me, Michael, I just want to let you know that I listened to the podcast between you and Sean, and it completely brightened up my day. And I went and showed the podcast to forty realtors. She was speaking at some some. Um, some event in, in Charlotte, like a few hours away from Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And she's like a, a very successful um, real estate agent. And she does speaking as well. She spoke to this woman, this real realtors women's group. And there's like 40 or 50 women there. And they, they, they all said that that podcast just brightened up their day, even though it wasn't as something like, you know, someone mm -hmm. about to, uh, you know, commit suicide. But even for that, I was like, you know what? That gave me so much purpose, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why I'm doing this. Yeah, totally. That's the reason why I'm doing this. I love it, man. Like I know that when I, you know, I know we're not taking all these things. We're taking nothing with us when we die. Nothing. None of these things, these material things, we're taking with us, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to leave something behind before I die, because that could be tomorrow. That could be in 50 years. That could be whenever. But I want to do something purposeful and meaningful in this world to help somebody, you know? Totally. A hundred percent. Yeah. It gives me a lot of purpose and I know, I know it does the uh, same thing for you as well. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And I think it's selfish not to, not to go out and inspire people. If you have the ability. And in fact, I would challenge most people because I think most people have that ability to inspire other people. There's always somebody who, who is a few steps behind you. That's the thing that, you know, one of the breakthrough moments I had was when I realized that you don't need to be like, you know, a celebrity or, you know, some, you don't need to be like a Tony Robbins or a Grant Cardone or an Oprah Winfrey to inspire people. You just need to have been where someone was before and come out of it to be able to inspire. You only need to be a few steps ahead of them, you know, and, and there's, and, and that's, 
you know, we, we, we justify and we make excuses for not, you know, putting ourselves out there. But really, it's just coming from a place of fear. We're just scared. We're scared to put ourselves out there, you know. And I actually think it's, yeah. it's, it's selfish because you're, you're given a God-given gift. And you're, you're here to be able to inspire other people, to be able to help other people in this world. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I completely agree. And, and I feel the same way about starting a business because I'll tell you, I deal with, I deal with startups all the time in my, in my tech company. And I'll tell you this, that a lot of people, and I think Mark Zuckerberg, he, he uh, had a video about this lately or something that, that you don't, in order for you to start a business, you don't have to have the next Facebook or the next Twitter or the next Uber. You don't have to have that to have a successful business and be happy. You don't need, mm -hmm. you can have, a, I always tell people this, that you can ha open up your own pizza shop with a unique process on how you treat customers or something that's different, essentially something that differentiates you. And you're an entrepreneur. You're starting something from nothing. Even if it's a pizza shop, you can be super successful. There's a billion pizza stores, pizza shops out there, right? I mean, so that doesn't make you different, but it's, it's not always about being different. And I think that's the problem nowadays is that we all have these um, these crazy high expectations and we're trying to be so different and trying to have the next best thing because of this media, uh, we're getting all this media pressure and mm -hmm. we feel, Oh, to be the next Mark Zuckerberg or Tony Robbins, like you said, or Gary Vaynerchuk, you have to ha be super, you know, you have to have this, this crazy different personality, or you have to have this crazy different idea to put into fruition, to be successful. And that's not true. And it's the same mm -hmm. thing with inspiring people, right? You don't need to be these you don't need to be lucky or to be these other kinds of guys that you see out here. These, um, you know, the, like like Grant Cardone uh, or Tony Robbins to, to inspire people. You can be a, a regular a regular person. You can help millions of lives. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love it. Um, so, kind of going back, Daniel, a little bit in regards to just podcasting in general. Did you see before you started? Did you see like there was a trend? or a need in the market to start your own podcast? Or was it something, I know you told, you talked a little bit about your story, but did you feel like there was something in the market in terms of branding yourself that podcasts were, were heavily in trend strategically? No, the truth is I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> That's the honest, <laughs> the, on, <laughs> the honest answer is I just fell in love with it because yeah. I, I just, I loved the fact that I could speak. And here's the thing for people who are shy, people listening to this, who you know, you're not, maybe, maybe you find it hard to get up on a stage or get in front of a camera. The beauty about podcasting is you don't need to be in front of a video. You don't even need to be in front of a single human being. I'm sitting here right now in my office. I'm in a, a, a room here and I'm talking into a mic and there's nobody here with me. You know, I don't have to worry about how I look, how I'm dressed, if my hair is, you know, the right way or whatever it is. Like, you know, and if you're a lady, you know, your makeup is and I don't have to think I'm just talking. I'm literally just talking into a mic. So it's incredibly easy to be able to to speak to, to, to hundreds, if not thousands of people all over the world. And you don't have to, like I say, don't have to get in front of a camera or get in on a stage. And we're right at the beginning right now, even though, you know, I started my podcast four years ago, I still think we're in the extremely early stages because there's a billion blogs out there. OK, but there's only half a million podcasts. Now, half a million sounds like a lot. And it is. It's a decent amount. I mean, half a million podcasts is a, is a nice amount, but it's nothing compared to mm. how many blogs there are. There's a billion blogs. Right. So it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to get bigger, bigger. And the audience is going to get bigger. Right now, there's about 70 million Americans listening to podcasts a month. Again, that's an incredible number, but it's oh, yeah. nothing. It's nothing compared to, you know, what it's going to be in, in a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. It's only going to go up. Now is the time to get into the podcasting space. And I'll tell you something else, especially as a guest, being a guest on podcasts, um, Right now, it doesn't cost anything. All right, I'm coming on your show. Did you charge me anything to be on your show? No. No. Now, what's crazy if, is if I said, Michael, I want to put an ad on your show, right? A 30 second ad. You would charge me for that, right? Because you're, you're, you know, it's an ad. 
Mm-hmm. That's for 30 seconds. You're giving yeah. me <laughs> you're giving me 30 minutes or 45 minutes of your audience's time. You're putting me in front of your audience that you've built up, that you've attracted, and I'm coming along and I'm taking 30 minutes or 45 minutes of your audience's attention and you haven't charged me for that. That's insanity. It's craziness, right? But that's going to change. And in fact, it's already changing. Some of the top rated podcasts right now, I know that John Lee Dumas, who uh, yes. runs the uh, Entrepreneur on Fire podcast, you know how much he, he was, by the way, it was free to go on his show six months ago. Six months ago, if you applied to get on his show, it was totally free. Now he charges $4,500 for a guest. Just to go on his show for 30 minutes, it's $4,500. Can you imagine? You should be kicking. such a large audience. Yeah, yeah, but you should be kicking yourself because six months ago you could have gone. So here's the thing. My message to, to people listening to this right now, don't wait another six months to start getting on podcasts because what's going to happen is, is the trend is going to be that all podcast hosts are going to start charging. And even if it's a couple of hundred dollars, Think about it. For every single podcast, a couple of hundred dollars, it adds up. Right now, it's 100% free to get on podcasts, right? Do you remember when when um, pay-per-click Google ads was 10, yes. 10 cents a click? You remember those days when it was 10 cents mm-hmm. a click? Oh, man, people are kicking themselves now because, oh, my goodness, if I could buy ads for 10 cents a click, my goodness, I'd be a rich man today, right? Oh, That's what everybody... That's so that's what everyone's yeah. saying. But now it's, you know, for the keywords that, that for my one of my companies, it's it's uh, $15 a click. $15 a click. And it used to be 15 Daniel, I, I have to pay $100 for some of the keywords we have to target for for uh, development, mobile apps and things like that. So 100 or $200 a click. It's insane. <laughs> it's crazy. Right? It's insane. Yeah. So just like that, I'm telling you that that in a, in about a year, two years, let, maybe even less than a year, but definitely within a year from now, you're going to be kicking yourselves because, again, it's going to cost you to get booked on every single podcast. It's going to cost you, you know, potentially hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars, depending on the size of the audience. So right now, the market's open for you. And to add on to what you were saying about being about just anyone being on a, a guest on a show is they mm-hmm. don't need to they don't need to essentially th- th- I think there's a wrong stigma about about um just being guests on on podcasts you don't need to be super successful or wealthy or be an author or have a million multi million dollar company or what have you right. to be on a show you don't need to it, it just depends on your niche your market who you're trying to you know what what you're mm-hmm. trying to reach your goals your purpose um and you can find other uh, podcast hosts, right? Other podcasters that are looking for people like you. You could be a, a you could be someone who's who's a, a a fit, just a regular fitness coach at a YMCA or some at some mm-hmm. spa or or whatever, some uh, some gym, a gold's gym, and you have ten years experience. You may not be an entrepreneur; it doesn't matter. But you have experience. You have something. You have a story that someone else doesn't have. You can share that story on these podcasts. Right. And it's all about positioning and presenting yourself in the right way. If you know how to position yourself and you know how to present yourself, then that's what that's what it's all about. And that, that's what I help my clients with. Um, and actually, I wrote a, a guide. I wrote a free guide on how to be a great guest and also how to pitch yourself to the right hosts. Because, again, like I said before, there's half a million podcasts out there. OK, you don't have to get on the top rated shows. You don't have to be you know, speaking to millions of people. But you know, even if you go on a small show, mm-hmm. you're still talking to 500 targeted ideal clients. I mean, what, what's that worth to you? Right? What's it worth to you to sit in a room, to stand up in a room with 500 of your ideal clients? Can you imagine? Yeah. And imagine doing that, imagine doing that once a week or even twice a week, right? It's incredible, but it's about positioning yourself and presenting yourself in the right way. And when you know how to do that, you're going to be more attractive to the host. Because the thing is, is that as a podcast host myself, and 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 I'm sure you you'll relate to this, Michael, and and anyone listening to this who has their own podcast, 
you know, we get pitched all the time, right? There's PR agencies trying to pitch, mm -hmm. you know, clients. There are people trying to get on because obviously now it's like, you know, everybody's getting on podcasts. Like that's a trend that's happening right now. So the thing is that podcast hosts are getting, you know, inundated with pitches. And the, the, the thing is, is that most of them are boring because most people don't know how to pitch themselves. And if they knew how to pitch themselves, like I said, if you knew how to position yourself and present yourself, you're going to get accepted to, to, to a lot of the podcast hosts that you're trying to, to get yourself on. Yeah. And there's a formula for that. It's, it's, it's a very basic, simple science that, that I've put together in a simple guide that I give away for free for those uh, uh, listeners that want to, that want to get it. I'll, I'll uh, let you know how at the end of the show. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll look forward to hearing about that. So Daniel, in regards to just people that you've interviewed and had on your show and your podcast, who are some mm -hmm. of the, uh, you know, who are some of the most well-known authority figures you interviewed and, and what were some of the best advice, just life or business that you received? Okay. So two, two come out right now for me. One was uh, someone called Jeff Hoffman, who was one of the billionaires that I had on the show. He is the founder of Priceline.com and Booking.com oh, wow. and a whole bunch of mm -hmm. other com companies. He was incredible. Um, we actually spoke about uh, the exact steps that he took to becoming a billionaire. Um, and essentially, one of the things that he said, which really stood out to me, and I've quoted it many times, um, was he said to me, because I turned around to him, I said at one point, I said, you know, Jeff, what's the secret? I mean, you're a billionaire. There's only 2,000 of you in the whole world, right? Out of seven or eight billion people in the world, there's only 2,000 billionaires. What separates you from so many people? And he said, Daniel, if I had to put it into one sentence, it's this. And, I ha and he said, I have this actually on my wall. It's hung up on my wall in my office. And it's, ideas are welcome here, but execution is worshipped. Execution is everything. There are so many ideas. People come up with ideas all the time. How many times did you say, oh, my goodness, oh, that, oh, I, I thought of that idea. You know, how many, how many times many did times. you say, oh, yes. man. Like, it's like when you're watching Shark Tank, right? I'm sure many of you <laughs> listening to this, if you've heard of Shark Tank or Dragon's Den, if you're in Canada or in the UK, how many times do we sit there going, what? That's my idea. I had that idea. I say, yeah, yeah very nice. You had that idea. But guess what? Somebody else took the idea and executed on it. That's the difference. You can have the perfect idea and someone can have a good idea. But the good idea will always win if it's executed on. Gary right? Vaynerchuk says the same thing, right? You can talk, you can talk about it all day long, but if you do nothing about it, if you're not willing to make mistakes and take that risk, you're. It's it's just it's a if there's what's the point? It's just a wasted idea. Right. There's nothing there. It's always potential. Potential is is meaningless unless it's unless you you put it out there. Unless you, you know, it's just raw potential. Right. Um, the other quote you asked me as well. So the other thing that uh, we I had a guest called John Vroman uh, from Front Row Factor. Um, incredible, incredible human being. Uh, the things that he's that he's done is is absolutely incredible. And the the sentence that he said that really stuck at, stu uh, stood out for me. Uh, and again, I've quoted it many times was what other people think of you has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you because it's not, it's not your business. What other people think of you, I mean, who cares what they think? You know, if somebody's, if somebody says, you know, you're amazing, they give you a compliment. They just might be in a good mood or you've triggered them a part of them that they, that they like, right? Mm -hmm. If someone puts you down says, you know, oh, you know, whatever, um, it's not some negative remark. It's got nothing to do with you. They might be just be in a bad mood. Someone, you know, someone upset them that day, or they're just, you know, um, finding something in you that they don't like about themselves. It's got nothing to do with you, what other people think. So true. It, it yeah. I mean, <laughs> why do we? Care? Why do so many of us care what other people think? Like, what's the? What is the benefit? What's the benefit if you think about it? You know. I mean, I stopped caring what yep. people think a long time ago, but I used to care what people thought when I was when I was younger, and it can it can lead to depression. It can lead to mm -hmm. so many of these 
just negative things in your mind, but they're not you. Why are they going to dictate where you're going to go in your life? You know? right, and you end up being, you, you're basically a puppet, essentially. If you think about it, like if, if someone says something good and that puts you in a good mood, or someone says something negative and that puts you in a bad mood, in a bad state of mind, you're their puppet. You've you you become their puppet. Literally, they've got you. They're holding the strings. They're pulling you this way. You go this way. They're pulling you that way. You go that way. Like, is that is that what I? I don't want to be a puppet. You know what I'm saying? So so cut those strings off. Just you're not a puppet. You're not. You don't. You're not controlled by other people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And some of these other people that you've interviewed, are pretty amazing. I mean, Tom Billio, I love Tom Billio, and and mm-hmm. and JP yeah. Sears. You probably got. They're probably some amazing interviews, huh? Oh, incredible! Yeah, these these are <laughs> JP Sears. I was like literally on the floor laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like really funny. Um, and Tom, Tom's always been someone I've always wanted to to to, to speak to. Um, and again, you know, what's amazing about the podcast world is you get to speak to people that you wouldn't necessarily be able to to get a conversation with them. You know, someone like Russell Bronson or Tom Billu. You know, for me to get a a one on one conversation with them, uh, I'd have to pay a lot of money. You know, to get a one-on-one, especially I mean, Russell Brunson uh, charges ten thousand dollars to have lunch with him. Wow! Can you imagine? Can you imagine charging ten thousand dollars for someone to buy you lunch? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, it's crazy. And to get like an hour of his time on stage, he charges two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Two hundred and fifty thousand. So I had him for an hour on my show for free. So essentially, I saved quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, just because I had a podcast. Isn't that insane? It is. It is. But you're giving someone a platform, and that's key. When you give someone else a platform to stand on, then then they, they, they're willing to give you their time. And was it well, – I mean, it must have been very difficult, though, to, to – was it they because they have a vetting process too to, to, to be mm-hmm. interviewed, right? Or even not necessarily. Yeah, yeah but then, well, look, at the end of the day – you know, uh, people are, are get highly selective with their time, and they should be because yeah. time is valuable, right? So the trick, the, the way to do it is that you've got to start somewhere. So you start off with some, you know, we'll call them A, A, B, C, D, E, you know, level type guests, right? So you start with the E levels, right? Friends, people that you have in your network, and then you start to to climb that ladder. And here's what happens: is that you start getting C level guests, and then the other C level guests or the B level guests say, "Oh, you had this guy. Oh, you had this. Uh, you, you know, th- th- oh, that's a friend of mine. Yeah." And then they come on your show, and so it's almost like you kind of every single time you get another kind of level of guest. It's like playing a video game. You know, it's like you get past the first stage and you 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 know you crack the next stage and mm-hmm. then you get to the third stage. And so it's like a game. You 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 keep climbing the ladder getting higher and higher and it's the same thing with podcast guesting as well by the way you know cuz like you said before you don't you don't have to be getting on the top rated shows you could start off being getting on smaller shows speaking to 100 200 people and then because you've been on let's say 10 20 of those types of shows then you've created a a name for yourself and on your bio which you should have, by the way, and that's another thing that I go through in, in the guide, is is having a, a great bio. On your bio, you've got, hey, I've been featured in this show, that show, this show, that show, and you list them all. And then you start getting on bigger shows. So instead of now getting in front of 100 or 200 people, now you're getting in front of 500, you know, 600, 700 people. Yeah. And then you st- you keep climbing until you're speaking to thousands of people. It's like anything. You're building your portfolio. The stronger your por- por- yeah. portfolio, you can leverage it, and you're gonna stop being on. You're gonna start to to be guests on on more top tier top tier level shows. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you this though. Yeah. It, it, however, though, it, it does. I like what you said before, Daniel, about your approach. You mentioned approach a few times. So, a lot of it is about your approach and positioning because. Um, yeah. I'll tell you, like for Tales from the Pros has, has been around a year, year and a half. It's it's, it's a fairly new podcast. However, the I think my I believe it was my tenth guest uh, might have been my no it was my ninth episode my ninth episode I got Jay Bayer my mm-hmm. ninth episode and what I did to reach him is I went on Twitter 
I had a good little pitch. I created an animated image of him um, and, and to, to get his attention. And boom, he messaged me back within one hour. He says, private message. He says, Mike, I love your approach. Very honest, very authentic, very real. I would love to be on your show. Yep. Isn't that crazy? Yep. I mean, yeah. No, it's not crazy yeah. because, well, because yeah, when you show <laughs> – I'm saying, yeah, it's crazy, but yeah. it's not crazy because when you realize that that people just want to see that you're putting in an effort, mm -hmm. okay? Because there's so many people nowadays that are so lazy with the messaging and the way that they, you know, they just, you know, it's they have a lazy approach. And when you have a lazy approach, people are not interested. But when you show that you actually care enough to spend a little bit of time, you know, researching the person whether it's a host that you want to get on their show or whether it's a guest that you want to get on your show, that's going to, you're going to stand out because most people are not doing that. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing I, I teach my clients, you know, is how to pitch a host. You know, it's not the same boring templated email that everybody uses. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. You've got to be unique. You've got to be creative. Same thing with your bio. You've got to have a creative bio. You've got to hit those trigger points. You've got to come out with something different because otherwise you're just going to be in a pile of, of hundreds of bios that the, that the host has and you're not going to stand out. It's like a CV. Yeah, it's like a resume, resume yeah. right? When you're, when, you're, you know, when you're writing a resume, if it's the same as everybody else and, you're dull and you sound dull and boring, no one, no one wants to hire you. You've got to do things differently. Same thing with business. Same thing with attracting clients. You've got to do things differently. You've got to market creatively. You know, people don't want to watch ads. You know, my, my um, interview with Neil Patel yesterday, one of the questions I asked him was, I said, Neil, is marketing dead? Is advertising dead? Because nobody's watching ads anymore. I mean, think about it, right? I mean, when was the last time you watched an ad on YouTube, right? We, we hover over the, the skip now button, right? Skip, 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 right? Yeah. After five seconds, we're like, come on, get out of my way already. I want to watch <laughs> the thing, right? But the thing is, Neil surprised me. He said to me, no, Daniel, you're wrong. Advertising isn't dying. Boring advertising is dying. But think about those adverts that you've watched that were like really Billie creative. Jean. Billie Jean. Yeah, exactly. Like Billie Jean marketing. Why is he such a household name now? Why do people love watching his adverts? I mean, they're ads, for goodness sake. <laughs> Be because he realized something. He realized that People don't want to be interrupted by boring salesy ads, but guess what? If it's entertaining, then it's like it's like watching uh, uh, an episode of Friends, or it's like watching an episode. I mean, think about the uh, the Super Bowl. People literally wait for the ads in the Super Bowl because they're so inspiring. They're like Hollywood movies, but in like three minutes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know. Look at Nike's ads. Look at, you know, Coca-Cola's ads. Look at those types of types of ads and you'll see that they're doing it right. They're doing it with a, they're not being lazy. They're getting creative. They're figuring out that people want to be entertained. They don't want to be interrupted with with boring ads. They're thinking outside the box. They're thinking outside the box. And by the way, this also applies when you're a guest on a show. You go on someone's show and you just talk about your business or you talk about what you can do for, for clients. You give them the sales pitch and you're going to be boring. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to be sold to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we love a good story and we love to be entertained and we want to be educated in an entertaining way and in an inspiring way. An so if you know way. how to do in an authentic way, right. So if you know how to tell a good story and you know how to entertain and you know how to engage your audience on their level, then you guess what's going to happen? You're going to sell them without selling them. Yeah. Because if your presentation, if your presentation is that good, it will sell itself. And Daniel, for, for in regards to just, just other podcasters out there in general, like, like me and you. Yeah. What were there some things that worked for you, like tips or strategies that helped you really grow your audience to to build this awesome, large, amazing platform for you 
um, mm-hmm. to, to, for, to, to have, have guests as your clients, to, to, um, mm-hmm. to interview top authority figures. Like what, how did you really grow your audience to get hundreds of thousands? Which is, was it, was it just a lot of consistent, um, um, uh, marketing on, on LinkedIn? Was it a lot of no. different, what, what did no, you really I do to help? Yeah. Okay. So I've got to quarter of a million downloads without spending a penny, a dime on, on advertising. And it's very simple. There's two, to me, there's really, there's two ways to do it. Number one is it's got to be quality. You've got to have a quality show. That's like you can't that that's like the first thing. Like without that, forget it, right? But the second way, and this is hands down the best way to grow your audience, is getting on other podcasts. Because think about it. Where are podcast listeners hanging out? On other podcasts. They're listening to other podcasts. Yeah. So if you if you've got a business podcast and you want to get more subscribers, you want to get more listeners to your show, then all you have to do is go on other business podcasts. Because people are listening to it and going, and then if they f- they fall in love with with you, right, and they relate to you and they love your story and they love your energy and they like your style, and then you say, hey, by the way, I have my own show and this is the name of my show, right? They go, oh, I want to I want to listen to that, and they go and subscribe to your show. There's no better way. And again, like I said before, right now it's totally free to do that. You just go on other. And the thing is, is also a lot of hosts are willing to do an exchange. So you can reach out to them and say, hey, by the way, um, you know, I know you've got this show and I've got uh, this show. I'd love to be a guest on yours and I'm happy for you to be a guest on mine if it fits a right fit, right? To me, that's the quickest way to grow your audience, your podcast audience. And once you have a certain amount of listeners, right, that's how iTunes can dictate whether you get on the top charts, right? Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to, to subscribers. So the more subscribers yeah. you have, the higher rank you get on iTunes. So you want to be encouraging uh, people to subscribe. It's not enough for people just to listen. iTunes wants subscribers. And so you've got to encourage them to subscribe. You've got to just keep mentioning it. You know, at the end of every show, you should just say, hey, guys, by the way, you know, this is a free show. Um, I don't make any money off of this. Um, unless of course you're getting sponsorships, but if you're, if you're not, um, if you can really help me out, it would, it would mean the world to me. If you just hit that subscribe button, it will help me get higher up on, on iTunes and I can speak to more people and inspire and impact more lives. Thank you. That's it. Heartfelt, authentic, very easy. It doesn't cost them anything to do it and it takes them five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what do you feel about YouTube and LinkedIn? Do you think YouTube and LinkedIn have helped you? Over the years, in regards to your podcast, no, uh, YouTube, not nothing. Like I, I really don't even, I don't even do anything on YouTube. LinkedIn, yes, LinkedIn, I've, I've actually found there's a gold mine recently. Um, there's a lot of uh, engagement on LinkedIn. Uh, in fact, I'm seeing more engagement on LinkedIn than I am on Facebook, which is really surprising to me and really exciting as well. Me too. Um, and, and a lot of people are not on are not on LinkedIn because they used to be on LinkedIn and it was just kind of a big spammy feed. And everyone was just kind of spamming and there was just a bunch of people looking for jobs, you know. But yeah. LinkedIn has changed, and and if you don't, if you haven't been on LinkedIn for the last, you know, I would say the last year. It has changed drastically, and I would give it. I would give it another go. Um, but I would also say another thing, and that is, again, I spoke to Neil Patel about this yesterday. Um, you don't want to be going on everything. You don't want to be trying to figure out Facebook and Facebook ads and LinkedIn and Google ads and YouTube and podcasting and blogging and instagram and twitter i mean just get i want to throw up just even as i'm saying it i'm just like oh my god i can't so how do you have time for all that right you can't especially when you're you know you're just starting out or you're or you're climbing the mountain you know you gary people like gary v and grant cardone they have teams of people doing this they're not doing it themselves okay so unless you've got the budget to hire teams of people to manage all of those accounts and to grow those accounts. And unless you are, you know, leveraging your time where you can afford to go on all of those platforms and engage, then don't do it because you're just going to spread yourself too thin. You've got to go deep. You've got to go deep and you've got to get really engaged with the audience on that platform. Because I can tell you one thing, people on Instagram are, are looking for something totally different than, than when they're on LinkedIn. 
oh, and yeah. people on YouTube are looking for different type of content than a podcast. So you've got to get deep and you've got to engage with your audience and you've got to pick a platform, literally pick a platform and go with it. And you be know, consistent. You, gotta, you know, the song, you got to pick a pocket or two. I think it's in Oliver, you know, Oliver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to yeah. pick a pocket or So you got to pick a platform or two. <laughs> <laughs> got to pick a platform or two just pick one or two platforms and just get really really good at that and then you can expand slowly slowly then you can in you introduce a third platform once you've started getting a lot uh, of engagement with the two and you've mastered the two and you've got more time then you could start you know expanding um but people expand too fast and they've got to they've got to niche down you've got to niche down it's another thing that i talk about and that i teach my clients is you've got to find your niche you've got to get really really clear on your messaging because the problem is again i see this all the time entrepreneurs are trying to be everyone i mean they're trying to be everything to everyone and they end up being nothing to no one you've got to get super super laser focused on what your messaging is who's your ideal client cut out everyone else there's so much noise out there you've got to go deep you got to get really, really deep today because there's so much noise. There is, yeah. And uh, that's great advice, Daniel. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will, will learn from that, especially um, not just potential guests on the show or podcasters, but I think business people in general, anyone, any entrepreneur, anyone starting something from nothing um, can really learn from that. Because I'll tell you, from dealing with startups, dealing with entrepreneurs, um, they, they, like you said, they want to be everywhere. They want to be everything to everybody. And it's so cluttered out there, man. And like you, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, you hit the spot. It, it's so cluttered out there um, uh, in the digital world online. There's just so much crap out there. There's so much going on. It's hard to, it's hard to, um, it, you can't compete. So you got to stay laser focused. Mm -hmm. You got to have tunnel vision. You got to know who your audience is, how to, how to target them, how to position yourself and create the right message to get mm -hmm. their attention and engage with them. And when you do that, by the way, when you do that, when you go deep and you get really laser focused, guess what happens? You become an authority in your niche. You become an authority. And when you become an authority, something magic happens. You stop, you stop needing to find people. They find you. Clients will be knocking on your door when you become an authority in your space. And that's, I mean, that for me, that is the biggest thing that I've learned on my journey so far is by becoming an authority in my space, that has just totally changed the game. And I could turn down clients now. I don't have to work with difficult clients. I used to have to take on clients I didn't want to work with because I needed the money and because I was attracting that type of client. But when you become an authority and you get really clear on your messaging and really clear on what your value is and really clear on who your ideal client is and you get really clear on the platform that you're going to go deep on, you don't need to accept everyone. You can get highly selective and people will want to work with you because they see you as the authority in your space. Yeah. Yeah, great advice. So Daniel, just to kind of close Thank things you. out here, I always ask, uh, I ask interview every person I interview these last three questions. I call them the three hows. So how do you essentially define failure? How do you define entrepreneurship? And how do you define success? Interesting. Okay, failure. We'll start with that one. Uh, failure is a total myth. There's no such thing. Um, so that's an easy answer. Uh, it's all in your head, and and there's you know, let, let me ask you a question. Let's make this, let's make this more interesting. I have a two-year-old. Okay. I have, I have a, 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 an 11 year old, an eight year old, a six year old, a two year old, and a three month old. Okay. <laughs> a mouthful. But, um, my, my, my two, my two year old, I remember when he was, when he was, uh, one and he was trying to walk. Okay. And he's stumbling and stumbling and he keeps falling and bashing his head and, ah, you know, he's like, now, is that a failure? Can you imagine if I would have stood over him and said, you failure, you didn't take more than three steps and you fell down already, you failure. Or for example, when he tried to say his first word, you know, and he was like, dad, I'm like, you failure, you can't even say the word daddy, what's wrong with you? You know, no, that's crazy <laughs> because that's growth. The reason why we're so fascinated when our child says a simple word or when he takes a step or when, you know, 
I don't know, does something that's the for the first time. We get all excited. We're like, oh my god, he he went poo in the toilet. Oh my god, we get all excited. My wife is like <laughs> celebrating because he made a poo in the toilet. Why? Because we're celebrating growth. That's growth. And you want and and I'll answer the third question about success. That's success. Success is growth. It doesn't matter how small the growth is, incremental growth, that's success. That's success. Entrepreneur, you asked me about what is an entrepreneur. To me, the the definition of an entrepreneur is someone who cannot work for anyone else. That, for me, is the honest answer. It's not that you want to start your own business because wanting is not enough. Uh, It's so hard to be on your own. It's so hard. There's so many challenges. I'm telling you, there's so many challenges being an entrepreneur. It's so lonely sometimes, and it's so difficult, and you don't know if you're going to pay the bills at times. It's just really, really difficult. But if you you know that you're an entrepreneur when you just cannot work for someone else, you cannot because it feels like a prison sentence. When I used to work for other people, I felt like I was in jail. And that's how I felt in school. When I was in school, I felt like I was doing a prison sentence. I felt like I couldn't express myself. I couldn't be creative. I was held back. I had to listen to to things I didn't want to hear. I had to sit in a chair. I didn't want to be there. I was uncomfortable. I felt like I was in prison. And when I worked for someone else and I had to take a lunch break when he when they decided I needed to take a lunch break and I could have to ask when I need to go to the bathroom or if I want to take a break and 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 I don't know, spend a couple of days with my wife and kids or It's not on my own terms. I have to get permission from someone else. I can't do that. There are some people that can. A lot of people can. And they're very happy being an employee. But an entrepreneur cannot work for anyone else. They just, in their bones, they're just like in their heart and soul, need to go out on their own. And that's it. That's exactly how I was. I could, there's no way I could, I felt locked up. I couldn't, I I couldn't have someone tell me, what I needed to do for that day. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I have such a, I have, there's no creativity. It's like, it's like, what am I doing here? What am I? Cause mm-hmm. some of the, the jobs I had before my company, I, I was thinking like, okay, this is, this is bloody miserable. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. This is miserable. This is not life. Like, what am I doing? I mean, and I'm not saying, like you said, some people are not like that, but for me, I, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do yep. it. Yeah. On my hardest days as an entrepreneur, when I'm having a tough day, and and every now and again, you know, you have those tough days and sometimes oh, you yeah. have those tough weeks. The one thing that I tell myself that makes me feel better is, Daniel, imagine if you were working for someone else. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, no, no, I'm fine. Um, I can <laughs> I can I can manage. I can manage this. I can manage anything as long as I don't have to go and shackle myself up in an office somewhere and, and take orders from 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 someone else. I'm. I'm happy. Like, you know, I'll, I'll get through this. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's, and that's other great advice, Dan. What you just said right now, I love it, is that you just said, like, when you're feeling down, you have these bad days, these bad weeks. We're all human beings. We're all going to have tough days, tough weeks, tough months. Mm-hmm. But to get out of it is to have gratitude. Yep. Totally. Have gratitude. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. There's so many times when I've been in, in a rut and I start literally, I do a shopping list in my head. I do a shopping list of all the things I'm grateful for. I'm married to a, a beautiful, wonderful lady who who loves me for who I am and I can't do anything wrong. She just literally, I don't know how or why. It's a bloody miracle that she's still married to me after 12 years. But just thinking of her and thinking of my my five children and the fact that they're healthy and that I'm healthy and just just being alive, being able to to eat, to eat good food. I mean, if you can really focus on the simple things in life, it's just, you can't even, I mean, you know, I think about my grandfather when, 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 when times are really tough, I think about my grandfather because my grandfather was a Holocaust survivor mm. and nobody can even imagine what mm. hell he went through, you know? That's a whole different level of, you know, for, you know, people nowadays, they're worried about, you know, oh, good. I don't have good Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi connections or or my my cell phone battery is low. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do? You know, I can't believe it. My grandfather starved. I mean, he was beaten. He was shot, buried alive. He was hung twice. He watched his parents get shot in the head. He was uh. literally five years of absolute hell. He was 13 years old. When he first went into the concentration camps, he came out when he was 18. All of his siblings 
murdered, his parents murdered. He was all alone. He didn't he didn't speak the language. He didn't have a penny to his name, not a dime, just the clothes on his back. And he rebuilt himself. He built himself up. And uh, I mean, you know, just need to think about what he went through and the fact that he didn't give up on himself. And it's because of him that I'm alive today. Because if he would have given up, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're living in a different era, man, and it's it, a lot of the, a lot of times we feel I I even feel oh man I'm so spoiled compared to some of these other people the way my parents grew up or mm-hmm. you know we're just so we're so spoiled and we have to we I mean we are a lot of us have so much and we're not thankful and you have to have gratitude and 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 have you know thank God like you know we're we're alive we're healthy we have opportunity we have so much and we and when you have gratitude and you think positive life changes it changes for the better yeah. So, Totally. Um, Cool. Well, Daniel, where can everyone find you, man? Okay, so I did promise uh, earlier on in the show that I was going to tell them where they can go for the free. So it's a free guide, and it basically takes you through the the journey that you need to take to become a great guest on shows and also how to pitch hosts and how to get accepted on on great podcasts. Um, And you can go there and get it on podcastguestsuccess.com. So again, that's podcastguestsuccess.com. Um, if they want to uh, listen to my shows, I've got two podcasts. One of them is called Can I Pick Your Brain? And that's my weekly show where I interview, um, you know, like you said, billionaires and, and you know, athletes and, and you know, New York Times bestselling authors. It's, it's once a week and it's called Can I Pick Your Brain? And then I have my daily show, which is called The Daniel Geffen Show. It's about 15 minutes of daily uh, inspiration basically. So if you want that, um, that's the Daniel Geffen show. It's one F. Um, and, uh, thank you so much, Michael, for having me on. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and thank you to, to all those who are still listening. Um, uh, I really appreciate you. No, I appreciate you, uh, Daniel. Thank you so much for, for being a part of this podcast, sharing your story with us. I'm very thankful. You're, you're a great guy, man. I know you're doing big things. So, I can't wait to connect and to continue our, our relationship. So I really, really appreciate everything. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, cool. Everyone, thank you again for listening to Tales from the Pros. And this is your host, Michael Giorgio. Until next time. Thanks, guys. Please subscribe to our YouTube page and also follow our social media. Uh, there are links somewhere around here. But uh, we really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all the support. And I'm going to be giving you awesome content continuously. And we look forward to seeing you soon.